Hi, this is Dave Barker. We're going to talk about unplanned events now. Um, and what I really mean by unplanned events, this really isn't spot news. This isn't the live work can be. But unplanned events to me is like uh, what I'm going to show you. Three examples here is following Hurricane Katrina. Obviously an unplanned event. I, I was one of the first reporters down there, did it for a couple of weeks. I was exhausted and, and sleeping on sidewalks, all that stuff. I got a call from my bosses in New York. Everybody's showing dead bodies piled up on, on, uh, on the sidewalks and areas around Lake Pontchartrain. And I said, all right, I will get you a body's story today. But I was talking to my photographer and I said, I don't want to do what everybody else is doing. Uh, that was kind of the way I am and still that way. I don't really want to follow the pack if I don't have to. And to me, we have seen so many bodies by that point. We'd seen them on roadways and on the lakes and from the air, uh, these beautiful, ugly splotches, these paradoxical images. And so we decided to find something else. And um, here's the story. It's called uh, Blessing the Dead. Most of the rescues are over. And the cleanup is fully underway, especially here at the convention center in New Orleans, where many people died last week. Now, as has been the case since the very beginning of this disaster, the dark duty of recovering the dead continues. Three to seven. Yes. Yeah. All right, just follow us. HD News was invited by this large group of clergy to go along on a very solemn mission to bless the dead in a section of uptown New Orleans. As the motorcade of vans begins its journey, Team one, team two, what's your location? We learn there is a new role for these helpers as the disaster enters a new phase. The process here has just started because uh, this has been a rescue operation. Lord, we just pray right now, God, we just pray your blessing, God, over this life. Lord, I'll see Jackson, God. We just thank you, God, for her life and, Lord, what she meant, Lord, to the world. We got a call here that this woman had died, obviously, and. Uh, you know, the role of the chaplain in times of crisis is to pray for the families, but also to pray for the deceased. Lori Gibson is a plumber from Henderson, Nevada, but for nearly two weeks now, she's been giving comfort in Louisiana, not just to the dead, but to the thousands of rescued living. I can't help but notice, but you have a cross on your chest yes. and a flag on your head. <laughs> yes, I'm here for God and I'm here for my country. And this man, a surgeon from Maryland. And, you know, for me, obviously, as a physician, it's difficult at this stage as opposed to the other stages uh, where I can do a little bit more help. For me, it's just as a, uh, a person of belief that I'm helping them come to terms with things, especially the uh, people who are still alive. For this pastor, it is not the first visit to national tragedy, and in each case, he tells us there is a memorable phenomena that ignites the senses. Oh, there's a smell with every disaster. In Oklahoma City, the smell was diesel fuel. In the World Trade Center, the, uh, the smell was concrete dust. In uh, Clean Texas, the smell was blood. You know, here At the Luby's cafeteria. Right? Correct, correct. Now this smell is a smell of musk and uh, and uh, just the sourness to it. It's just a, a wet, musky smell. Well, it's overwhelming. God opened all the doors for us to be here, and we've helped a lot of people. Pretty good decision. We won the National Gabriel Award over all the other networks uh, because of that report. Really, not shown the disaster after Katrina at night. And New Orleans was pitch black most of the time at night. Um, and this didn't take very long. It took about 45 minutes to shoot. It's just a series of stand-ups. Take a look. We were up at 6 o'clock this morning. It's now 9 o'clock at night. We probably got about another three hours. We're not doing anything out of the ordinary. This is Media Central here. All the networks, in fact, uh, reporters from all around the world are here. And uh, they have the same schedules along with all the volunteers, the police officers. Our home since the uh, disaster began is, is right up here. It's a really nice satellite truck, but that's not the story, so I won't show you what's happening inside there. But this has been home. In fact, we've been sharing this with the BBC, of course, out of it, Europe, excuse me here. It's kind of hard to get around the area here. This is our home, and uh, this is the reality. This is the garbage that our crew has assembled over the last uh, couple of weeks here. There's some green ooze over here. Can we still see it? Yeah. That hasn't spilled out. That's just kind of festering from the ground. These are the conditions we're working around. You got to be really careful where you walk here. Here's the Desire Oyster Bar. And it is so dark in here. You know, just for a second, Ofer, turn off the light. I want you to see just how dark it gets in here. Man. Now, the other night, I'm not sure exactly where it was, but we were, yeah, it was right up here at this turn. There was a body in the left lane. You know, just suddenly came upon it, and uh, we had to peer out of the way. You know, that was just, uh, it was just so sad, and 
and really pretty scary. Last time I did this was on 9-11, uh, walking right in the middle of a major federal interstate. Nobody around, no cars around here. And here, downtown New Orleans. By the way, Hurricane Katrina did not hit New Orleans. It hit past Christian, Mississippi first with one of the biggest storm surges in history, devastated that area. We were the first uh, crew allowed back in there. I found a guy who had ended up in a tree. They simply call it ground zero for Hurricane Katrina, a once idyllic Mississippi neighborhood 80 miles east of New Orleans. You've now got to be wondering how many died here. We're simply told many. Uh, I bought it in May. You just bought this in May? Yeah. This man, without question, should have been on that dark list. Did I hear you were in a tree? Yes, I was. It's that one right there with the limbs all broken off at the top, right at the ridge of the house. Over there? Yeah, right at the corner. Mike Spencer, a retired psychiatric nurse, rode out the storm, survived by hanging on to the thin branches of a tree next to his home for 12 hours. This big old beam caught me in the chest, drove me through the house, into the kitchen. How far? Oh, geez, well, the uh, living room, dining room's about 24, 25 you got feet. physically driven that far? Oh, yeah. After he found himself in the back of the house, water and debris were everywhere, rising fast. But out of nowhere, he found his grandson's boogie board that he had used last summer at the beach. It gave him just enough time to get to that tree. Because if it wasn't for that boogie board, I would have never got out of that house. Mike is married. His wife and kids were safe a couple of hundred miles north, yet he chose to stay in a 75-year-old house. I didn't think it was going to be that bad. Well, Plus, I had people coming in. We category were doing four. That. It was a Category 4. It was a 5 a few days before yeah. that. You didn't think it was going to be that bad? No, because they kept saying 18, 20 foot of water. You know, this thing went through Camille and everything else. By the way, throughout our visit, <laughs> he laughed. Your house is kind of here. <laughs> yeah, partially. Yeah. <laughs> and laughed. <laughs> it's just what keeps me going. Look at that camera. Give somebody some piece of advice for the next hurricane that comes into their area. <laughs> My next one, there can be a thunderstorm in Cuba. And I'm gone. <laughs> Color my ass gone. <laughs> so in conclusion, unplanned events. I said this before, but if you're doing big stories especially, think small. Find somebody like him. Did, did that tell what happened during that storm? I think it did. So just remember, your audience is learning from you. If something surprises you, if you're learning something while you're out in the field, your audience will too. So again, find stuff that's interesting and memorable to you.